trust this robot here and we have for you what was in the news for AI for September 14th through September 20th. It looks like Facebook is going to be bringing their first set of smart glasses to us next year. They're going to be Ray-Bans. Um, it's the first step in multiple steps to true AR glasses through their Project Aria. Uh, they have more about Project Aria right on their website, and I'm going to put links to all of this stuff below so that you can check it out in further detail. Um, one thing that Facebook is noting is that they're fully aware that there might be some privacy issues surrounding their first set of glasses. Um, it says that Facebook says the company will start testing Aria in the real world with Facebook employees and contractors to hammer out tough issues around areas like privacy, video recording, and design. Uh, I know that it's perfectly legal if you record stuff in the public on the streets, but once you walk with a camera into a private company, corporation, or institution, you do need waivers uh, and permission to be able to record stuff. So that's going to be interesting to see how that kind of pans out. Um, next, we have uh, Brightseed raises $27 million for its AI-based phytonutrient discovery. This one, I think, is really, really cool. So they've created or developed, rather, uh, an AI that they're calling Forager. And I'm just going to read this to you. Forager is the world's first and only AI to map millions of hidden phytonutrients and make the new biological connections between plants and human health. Using traditional methods, it would take 50,000 years to map the active compounds in the plant kingdom. So basically what they're gonna be doing is taking everything that their algorithm is able to learn about these plants and herbs, and then they're gonna also be matching that with everything that AI knows about human biology, and they're gonna determine how they can merge the two for optimum human health, which I think is phenomenal. Um, this is a perfect example of how we can use technology to improve the human experience. I think this one's great. Uh, let's see. Next, we have new artificial intelligence that could save both elephant and human lives. So this one is talking about how we have basically moved into some of the space that the animal kingdom is used to having um, because we our population is growing. Um, we're using more area for agriculture and they're having problems with elephants going into farmers area and land and eating a lot of their crops. So what Svidia has done is they're working with these communities to be able to use their AI. Let's see, I'll just read it to you. Resolve recently debuted Wild Eyes AI system, a tiny camera imbued with artificial intelligence that can be trained to recognize specific animals in the field. The first version of Wild Eyes is trained to recognize elephants, which often come into conflict with humans when they raid crops and enter villages. So they'll be able to scare off the elephants before it gets to the point of them raiding their villages, which can help both the farmer and the elephant. Um, so when I learned that it was Savidia, I was like, let's take a look at their website and see all of the other stuff that they're working on. Um, so you can see right here, they have social distancing maps. They're able to blur out license plates in videos. They're able to blur out faces in videos. Um, animal thermal detector. I don't know if they're doing this yet, but they I'm sure with their technology, they could help save animals from poaching, which would be awesome. Um, human thermal detector, uh, vehicle thermal detector, ship detector, wildfire detector, which I'm based in California, we could certainly use this. Um, but yeah, in looking at this, I was not too surprised once I discovered all of their technology to see that they are based in Washington, DC, but interesting company nonetheless. Um, so we also have uh, the staff at ARM, so NVIDIA uh, acquired ARM, and it was announced this week, and it looks like the staff there is going to get $1.5 billion um, div divvied up to the employees with an equivalent of 230000 each from the acquisition. So that was pretty impressive to see that the company is sharing the wealth from the acquisition. Um, a, I read a little further into the article and looked into it a little more, and it looks like it's based on retention. Um, it doesn't say what the retention rules are, but my guess is it's like the employees have to stay for 
three years or maybe they get them quarterly so it's like small amounts throughout the time let's see uh the next thing we have in the news is that instagram will automatically add ai powered captions to your igtv videos um it's saying that they're going to do this when the sound is off so that people can still see the words um, I think this is great for people that are deaf, that they can just leave the sound off and always get captions. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, IBM is pushing for the U.S. to limit facial recognition on their exports. Um, they sent a letter, which I have posted right here, and I will have this posted below if you want to read the full details of it. They're basically outlining the different types of facial recognition um, and stating that we need to have more limitations on what we're allowed to export. So there are three different types. Um, this first type, face detection, these systems are capable of distinguishing a face from other objects. So your face versus a car without identifying the individual's face. Facial authentic authentication, uh, this application works by comparing the features of a face facial image uh, with those of a single stored facial template, the technology matches features of an individual's face one-to-one. -one. Um, so this is used at places like airports so that people can board. Um, and then facial matching, this is more like law enforcement. So facial matching is where they have a whole entire database of faces and they're seeing if you match in their database. And it goes on, but it's interesting if you wanna read it in its entirety. This one I thought is really cool. So the US Library of Congress launches an AI tool that lets you search 16 million old newspaper pages for historical images. Uh, so there's a navigator in here. Let's see, to use the system, simply enter a keyword in the newspaper navigator and the AI uh, will surface matches from a data set of 1.56 million newspaper photos. You can specify a date range and the state yeah, the state the new newspaper was published in. That's pretty cool. All right, so these AI gyms in your home seem to be totally blowing up, like tons of money is going into them. Not financial advice, but if you wanna invest in something, consider investing in one of these AI home gyms. Uh, so for this one, we have Steph Curry jumped in, Amazon Alexa Fund is putting money into it. LA Clipper, Paul George, Seattle Seahawks, Bobby Wagner, pro golfer, Michelle Wee, Serena Williams is already in it, Clay Thompson. And this is all for Tonal AI. They've got like 200, millions already, 200 million already invested in it. Uh, they're competing with Peloton, uh, Mirror. I think Mirror is pretty cool. Let's see, Mirror is kind of Black Mirror-ish, <laughs> but it's cool nonetheless. Um, so this lady was a ballerina that decided she wanted to be able to, as she says, work smart and not hard. So she's created this mirror that you can put in your home and you can essentially see the person that you're working out with in the mirror. Um, there's all types of different workouts that you can do. One thing that she noted that the other devices haven't noted that I think is really cool is that she has a slip that you can put right over the camera when you're not using doing the workout. So that I thought was thoughtful and considerate. Uh, and this is a little bit more of an article on her. So let's see. She was a ballerina before, I think I'm gonna mention that. So here was one of the reasons I was saying a potentially good investment. Uh, Peloton is worth 13.7 billion, Mirror is worth 300 million, Tonal AI, they just got 200 million to go into it. Um, so that is, that's pretty much it for this week. That's all we've got for the week. I'm gonna come back with news again on Sunday next week. And until then, I hope you have a great week ahead. Talk soon.